Hello, Michael here with another how do I render tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to render up this pan that we created last time in ZBrush with Redshift in Maya. Um, a couple of the main things that we're going to be looking at hitting is the handle there, which is going to be pretty straightforward, as is the mount with the screws. Um, and finally, the bowl, which is the most interesting part. We're going to get some variation in our specularity, which you can see there. No, that is not noise. That is intentional. Um, and we're going to also use a uh, material blender so we can um, get this rim color variation from the uh, non-stick area. Uh, so let's jump right into Maya. All right, here we are in Maya. Uh, just a quick word about my scene setup. I've just got a dome light with the HDRI image that you can see there in the background and I've also got a light over the back uh, coming down just at a value of 65. I've also created this background here uh, which is just a plane with the back edge raised up and it's smooth subdivided. So the first thing we'll do is create some materials. So let's go to the Hypershade editor. Uh, and let's go to Redshift and just make a Redshift material. This can be the handle, so we'll call this RS handle. Create another one. This can be RS um, handle mount. And another one, and this can be RS bowl. Actually, I'm going to use a layer mixer, so I'll have to plug that into something else in a moment. Uh, we'll go back to the handle and we'll start with that. Select your handle and then right click and hold and assign material to mesh. Uh, we'll go into RS handle there. And uh, we're just going to change a few parameters to get it this to look like a soft rubber. So I'll just uh, zoom in there a little bit on the old handle. Okay, so uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, we're going to increase the roughness on our diffuse channel and I'm going to change that color to be somewhat darker. I'm going to uh, keep the reflection. I'm just going to reduce the value to something like 0.1 and uh, increase the roughness till it sort of looks like a fairly, it's almost waxy depending on how you sort of, depending on how you want it to look. I'm just sort of going off one that I've got at home and it's got a sort of this soft waxy um, not feel to it, it's quite rough, but um, the way that the light reflects off it gives it that waxy sort of look. I'm also gonna change the um, BRDF to GGX because I just prefer that specular model. Um, it's a little bit softer, the fall away um, in general. Uh, I use it for pretty much everything nowadays, actually. Um, there are some cases where you might wanna use Beckman, but um, I kind of prefer GGX as a general rule. So that's the handle. Really, that's all there is to it. If you're happy with that, then we can move on. Uh, so next is the mount, which is this part here. Uh, so we'll just make sure that's assigned. And we want this to be a metallic color, so we'll just get on the um, attribute editor here for it. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to Fresnel type and we're going to change that to metalness. And then we're going to increase the reflectivity quite a bit. Um, as you can see, now it's quite metallic. And we're going to also increase the metalness to make it more metal, just like Mastodon or something. Um, all right, and you'll see that it's quite a clean metal, metallic finish at the moment. If you wish, you could change it to be a darker metal or a lighter metal. So the further you go up, it almost looks more like a chrome. Um, I sort of like it somewhere around there. That may be a bit brighter. Yeah, somewhere around there. You could go further if you want to adjust the roughness um, a little bit. So it doesn't look super new, you can. Or if you want to run a procedural in it, into it to make it look, um, have a, a bit more variation, you can also. I'm just gonna stick with it looking quite new, like it's fresh out of the box for now. So that looks pretty good to me. So why don't we move on to the interesting part, which is the bowl. So with the bowl, um, I've actually UV mapped this one and I'll show you what I've done. So I've got the bottom and the, top and the inside um, as to UV islands and then I've just got the rim um, unwrapped really poorly just like that but I just quickly did it in 3D coat so don't blame me and what I've done is I've used a mask uh, I've created an alpha mask for each so the bottom side is uh, black I believe and the top is, is white or value of um, one so what that will mean is we can use that to control our layer mix so I'll quickly show you the map actually okay so the um, yeah the mask is sorry the other way around so the bottom's white and the top's black um, if you do this in Photoshop, you'll need to make sure you go to channels and create an alpha channel. So I've created that alpha channel at the top there. The black is just for reference to know why it actually covered that UV space. But um, the moral of the story is whatever area you want to be the rim, um, if you're going to follow this tutorial, we want to make that as the black or masked area in the alpha. 
And talking about the rim, um, there's one other thing I want to do to it. So when I modeled this in ZBrush, I didn't actually give it an edge. Um, and I'm going to do that now because I kind of prefer it. So select an edge loop um, or whichever edge loops you want. If you Obviously, if you've used a mask, then you want to select the edge loop that you've UV'd separately. Uh, I think I did this with three from memory and it was those three. So with those edge loops selected, then I can just go to the transform tool and um, squash them down. And now we'll get a nice flat edge, as you can see there. Uh, which just looks a little bit nicer. It's something I should have thought about when I was modeling it, but um, it's just an over, a minor oversight. Um, all right, so let's jump back into the Hype Shade Editor. So we're going to create a Redshift Material Blender, and we're going to, um, in layer one, we're going to go to the Blend Color. We'll click the checker box and use File Input, um, and we'll go to our image name. And this is just where the, um, we're just going to go to the alpha map that I created, which I showed you in Photoshop just now, which is that one there. And uh, then we're going to create two, uh, another material. This one's going to be the uh, the metal rim. So for now, I'm just going to make it white. I'll, I'll make it metallic in a moment, but we're just going to call this RS Bowl Rim. And we'll run the out color into the base color. And we don't need that uh, shading group anymore. Uh, now, I created that um, that bowl shader before, but I just realized I don't actually want that. Um, I'm going to go to shader and I'm going to create RS car paint, which is obviously you're always uh, often used for car paint. But in this particular example, we're going to use it for something else. So um, it's going to look orange at the moment, which is fine. We'll just run an IPR so you can see what's happening. Uh, we need to assign that shader to the bowl uh, and not to the background. Okay. So now you can see that with the uh, alpha map that the rim is that white color, just that white diffuse that we created. And the base is that um, orange car shader, which is cool, um, but not what we want right now. Um, so we'll just jump into the attribute editor for that. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, change the pigment color to be um, just a dark gray as dark as you like. Uh, probably not black actually, just leave it a bit off gray. Um, otherwise the flakes don't quite show up. Uh, and then we'll just change the edge fall off color just fractionally. Actually, you're not really gonna be able to see what I'm doing here, but uh, maybe. So if you just, uh, that was with the uh, curve factor low, and this is with it high. So it's just changing the way the reflectivity works. Uh, next is uh, general, we're not gonna really change too much here. We're gonna change that to GGX. Um, glossing at, at 0.2 is fine. We also want to open up the metallic flakes. Uh, we actually want to go down to clear coat and we're going to turn clear coat off because we don't want it to be that glossy finish. I'm just going to make that a little bit lighter so we can get to see those pigments. Now it might be a little bit hard to see on the video, but they are in fact there. Um, you can just see them there. It's probably the lighter I make it, the easier it will be to see them. Yeah, so I'm just going to run with it um, at this lighter gray color just while I'm, I'm just worried the compression, you'll lose the flake color in the um, in the video. So I'm just going to roll with this and I'll roll it back at the end of the video. But you can see the variation in the flakes there. Um, we're going to make some changes to the way that the Fresnel is working. So we're just going to change the curve factor to be value of 10. Uh, so under metallic flakes, you can blend it here with the uh, white as to how much you want. I might keep it at 1.0 for now. Um, increase the glossiness just a bit. Yeah, so this will also impact how um, visible they are. If you want them to be sort of like that, obviously they become quite sharp. So somewhere around the middle to get that sort of painted anodized look, um, I think is probably the way to go, maybe 0.5. And then now I can probably turn that down a bit to get it to look to the base color that I want. Um, and we're going to increase the facing reflectivity. So the ones that are facing the camera are um, a high value and keep the per perpendicular at 1.0 as well. And uh, the curve factor will keep it 10. Um, so the definition is once again controls for the flakes. So uh, I'm going to increase density. Um, we don't want it too high because we don't really want them touching so much. Um, we'll keep the, de the decay distance at 500 for now. Uh, the variation, so the more you increase that, um, it will look brighter, but it's just because it's contrasting um, the value and the size. So if you reduce it, it'll be less obvious. Um, 
if you increase it, it will tend to make it more obvious. And then you can change the scale. Um, I want it to be a little bit smaller than it is, maybe 0 0.003. And then if I find that to be too small, I can increase the variation or decrease it. But the main thing I want to get here is that the specularity is not so consistent as it would normally be on a curved surface. Um, I want it to look like it's it's got variations and roughness without running a procedural into it. Um, and this, this technique you would use for things like um, anodized metal, which is just a metal that's got a coating which is paintable essentially, it makes it a bit porous. Um, and particularly when there's a clear coat on top, it sort of multiplies the, the way that that surface can look. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna keep it about there for now. I think that's getting pretty close. Let's have a look at it at the shot length. Yeah, I'm only rendering this at 540, um, but it looks pretty good, I think. That's sort of the surface quality that I'm looking for. So let's finalize the metal on the rim. Um, if you wanted, you could even use the same material from the um, handle mount, which I might just do. We'll make this look quite clean. Um, so bowl rim, you can be disconnected. And we'll bring in handle mount, just my middle mouse dragging it in, and we'll run the out color into the base color. So now we have some consistency in materials between this rim and the um, screws and that edge part there. Okay, I've just increased the resolution to 1080, so you should be able to see this very easily now in the video. We're getting some nice variation in the specularity there. Um, obviously, this will apply to the backside of the um, of the pan as well. Um, I could actually create another um, material for the bottom side if you wish, and you'd have to create another uh, alpha mask again and mask out the internal and the edge for that. And then you can make it something a bit more specular, uh, a specular metallic sort of surface. Um, but I didn't want to get lost in the weeds and I'm sure by now you should have figured out how to do that. So you can make a pan that looks even more exciting than this one. Um, but that's the main technique and I thought that the specular sort of anodized look is, is a pretty cool way of going about it and um, I thought that people might enjoy that one. So if you did, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of these tutorials every week uh, for other software products um, aside from just Maya and uh, Redshift, things like ZBrush and other renderers as well. If you haven't already um, and you want to stay up to date, make sure you're on the Facebook page, link in the description. That's it for now though, thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.